Our first topic is a serious one. If you've ever experienced a seizure or have witnessed someone who has had one, you know just how scary the situation can be. But they are only the symptoms. Epilepsy is a disease which causes them. Two doctors join me here today, Dr. Jayat Acharya and also Dr. Michael Sather. They are here to help us gain a better understanding of epilepsy and a patient's options. So let's start with you, doctor. What is the difference between epilepsy and then the seizures? So seizures are neurological symptoms that occur when there is a sudden, excessive, and abnormal change in the electrical activity of the brain. Okay. The actual symptoms uh, vary and depend on uh, which part and of the brain and how much of the brain is actually affected. But some of the common symptoms are change in the level of consciousness, stiffening of the body or jerky movements of the body, sometimes mm, just staring, uh, or a variety of sensations. And sometimes patients can be fully conscious during a seizure as well. That's really interesting. So maybe we won't, you think of a seizure, you think of somebody kind of convulsing. Exactly. But not but necessarily. Not necessarily, exactly. And most seizures tend to be very brief. They last maybe a couple of minutes or so. Um, on the other hand, epilepsy is, is the underlying brain disorder okay. that gives rise to seizures. So most people with epilepsy have seizures over and over again, and oftentimes these are unprovoked. And not, not all pa patients with seizures have epilepsy. Okay. And so that's another distinction. Okay. It you could know, be something instance, else. It, yes. Well, no, in the sense that if you have only one seizure, for instance, in your life, and some people have that, um, or if you have seizures mm. only in certain specific situations, such huh. as um, low blood sugar or lack of sleep, severe sleep deprivation, alcohol withdrawal, or high fever, and okay. this usually occurs in children, then such people are not considered to have epilepsy. They just have seizures. In terms of epilepsy, though, how common is epilepsy? Well, epilepsy, as it turns out, is one of the most common neurological disorders, and it affects about one in 26 people. So about one in 26 people will develop epilepsy sometime during their lives. That's way more than I would have thought. Yeah. Treatment, though, is available. You know, how, how is treatment used? Absolutely. I think, as fortunately, epilepsy is also one of the most treatable neurological disorders. Good. And we usually begin treatment with um, medications. Uh, there are more than 20 different medications available, and so choosing uh, the right medication for a patient depends on a number of different factors. But once we get the right medication, it's usually effective in controlling seizures in about 50% of patients. Now, well, what if it's not? Is that where surgery would come in? Yeah, there's about a third of patients that don't respond well to medical management. Uh, the other two-thirds do very well with medical management, about a, well, one-third do not, and they are potential candidates for surgery. The most effective surgery we have available is a surgical resection where a portion of the brain that's actually causing the seizures is removed. Um, and of course, we need to do that safely, so we need to determine uh, whether or not that particular area of the brain has any function associated with it, whether that's speech, vision, movement, sensation. And so there are various tests like a functional MRI that we'll use to assess for that. All right, uh, we actually have a graphic of that. This is how you would look at the brain. So there's a functional MRI and <clears throat> in the uh, yellow-orange appearing uh, blobs there that you see are, are the, someone's speech area. So th if the seizures were arising in that location, that patient may not be a candidate for a resection. The so most common, oh, I'm sorry. The, the most common example I could give a, of, a, of a resection is a temporal lobectomy where we remove uh, the temporal lobe, which sits right behind the eye above the ear in this location here. Uh, and it renders patients seizure free about 70% of the time when we, when we remove it. So very effective and potentially curative treatment. The brain though, I was telling you, it, it, it's kind of scary. It seems like <laughs> so strong, it's so delicate, and there are places where maybe it's not safe to do certain treatments. It, are there other options for that then? Yeah, so that's the great news is we have options available to patients when they have seizures that arise from an area that we can't either, we can't safely remove or sometimes patients have seizures that arise from more than one place in the brain and we can't potentially take both places out. So we have neurostimulation and there's two di different types of neurostimulation uh, out on the market. And a neurostimulator is a bit nothing more than a biomedical device that's delivering electrical impulses to the nervous system to modulate the nervous system and decrease the seizures. And one is a vagus nerve stimulator which involves placing of a, of a uh, electrode around the vagus nerve in the neck okay. um, near the carotid artery. And the other is the one you'll see here which is, which is the neuropace responsive neurostimulator which actually involves implantation of brain electrodes That's this here. Uh, in the surface okay. of, the, of the brain in and around the area where the seizures start 
and it actually record the seizures and when there's a seizure starting it will abort the seizure by sending an electrical impulse which prevents its clinical manifestation. So some very effective treatments when we do not have the surgical resection option available. So really the message I'm hearing is, you know, you, if, if somebody's experiencing these seizures, there, there's are, there are treatments. You don't have to live like that necessarily. And folks can learn more about epilepsy and the different treatments and different symptoms at a web chat this afternoon. Both doctors are participating in that ABC 27 web chat. It starts at 1 this afternoon and will go for one hour. You can find more at abc27.com slash chat. Again, that web chat starts right after Good Day PA. Thank you so much, doctors.